Hello, my name is Linda Goldman and I'm a board certified women's health care nurse practitioner and a family nurse practitioner. This short presentation is a description of the way to differentiate between screening tests and diagnostic tests. These types of tests are used to identify patients who need specific treatments and those who do not. A screening test is one that is used to test a large number of people. It is used to screen many healthy individuals in order to identify those who may need further testing. We start with a large number of healthy individuals. When a screening test is positive, it should be able to identify the few individuals from the larger population who need further diagnostic testing. The test should be relatively inexpensive. It should be easy to screen large numbers of people at a low cost. It must be a reliable test, meaning that it is able to identify people with an illness or condition and not over-identify those who do not have this illness or condition. In other words, it should have a high sensitivity and specificity. I'll cover more on this later. Some examples of screening tests include blood pressure, where we screen most everyone presenting for a health care visit. This simple, inexpensive, easy-to-use test is able to identify people at increased risk for hypertension. Cholesterol testing is done as a screening blood test to identify people who may need further lipid testing to diagnose hyperlipidemia. A pap smear is an effective screening test that is used to identify women who need further diagnostic testing such as colposcopy and biopsy to identify early precancerous changes that can be treated early. Mammography is a screening test recommended for all women over the age of 50. If abnormalities are detected by this screening test, diagnostic radiologic tests such as an ultrasound or an MRI or biopsies can be performed. A PPD or TB skin, skin test is a screening test that is used to screen a large group of individuals to identify which ones may need further diagnostic testing, such as a chest x-ray to rule out tuberculosis. An ideal screening test will have high sensitivity, which means that it will be able to identify a high percentage of affected individuals. It's also considered to be a true positive test, meaning that people who test positive with the screening test really do have the condition. An example is a positive pregnancy test when a pregnant woman has a positive test result. The ideal test should also have high specificity, where the result does not give false positive results. That may cause anxiety in a patient. Another way of looking at this is a test with high specificity has a low rate of false positives. An example of a false positive test is a woman with a positive pregnancy test but who's not really pregnant. Another example is a patient with a positive ELISA test for HIV that came out positive when in fact the patient did not have HIV. It was a false positive result. A test with high specificity has a low rate of false positive results. Another criteria for an ideal screening test is that the test should be able to identify patients who require further testing and treatment early enough in the disease process so that the treatment will eradicate the disease. An example using the pap smear as an excellent screening test is that it allows many individuals to be screened in a cost-effective manner and it can identify those needing additional diagnostic testing such as colposcopy. Once this additional testing is performed, a precancerous condition can usually be diagnosed, often many years before cervical cancer has a chance to even occur. Diagnostic tests are those tests that are used to make a definitive diagnosis. For example, an individual with a positive PPD, a TB skin test, would be referred for further diagnostic testing and have a chest x-ray performed to identify the treatment plan. 
the people who had a negative PPD do not need any further diagnostic testing as PPD screening tests indicate that they have not been exposed to the tuberculosis bacterium. These diagnostic tests enable us to identify an illness or condition tuberculosis, hyperlipidemia, cervical cancer or precancer, etc. So it can be treated but may be more costly than a screening test and may carry some amount of increased risk as compared to a screening test. Examples of a diagnostic test include amniocentesis for fetal chromosomal anomalies, cardiac catheterization, a breast biopsy of a lesion identified on a screening mammogram, a colposcopic exam and biopsy for a woman with an abnormal pap smear, or a chest x-ray for an individual with a positive PPD skin test for tuberculosis. A diagnostic test may be more expensive than a screening test. For example, a chest x-ray is more costly than a PPD skin test. Colposcopy and biopsy are more expensive than a pap smear. MRI and breast bi biopsy is more expensive than a mammogram. There may also be additional risks to the patient than a screening test. An x-ray delivers a small amount of radiation, while a PPD skin test does not. A biopsy has a risk of discomfort, bleeding, and infection. A mammogram does not. Amniocentesis during pregnancy has a higher risk of complications than a screening blood test for fetal chromosomal anomalies. This is a slide showing the photo credits. Three of the photos came from Wikipedia. The rest came from Microsoft Clip Art Files. Thank you very much. I hope this was helpful.